<laughs> Welcome back to take two of this episode because we had audio difficulties. Yeah, which we, we always enjoy and are truthful whenever we have to redo a video. Although we don't have a whole lot of outtakes while recording, we no. just have had to re-record a couple of times. We yeah, need to get in the habit of sound checks. In which we, we finally did on this one. Oddly enough, everything decided to, every microphone decided to turn on at the same time. Yeah, so our webcam, our computer, double mic, and then our microphone microphone, which is behind Baphomet here. It's been fun. We got a lot of jigger rig. I mean, it works, but a lot of it's jigger rigged. I like how the, though, like it hides perfectly behind. They line up nice. It, it's wonderful, and like the, the it goes right with his mohawk thing. It's just it's beautiful. <laughs> so, so, today's episode pays homage to not only the Texas Chainsaw, Wizard of Oz, Cool Hand Luke, Day of the Dead, and Deliverance. Deliverance. <laughs> that. But this was also yeah. a request from yes. many moons ago, uh, our second request ever uh, asked. From, from Mr. Facebook follower. Yep, Mr. Alan White. He's been following us since 2020. Thank you very much. And also, you're grounded, Alan. Yeah, after watching this, you're <laughs> grounded. You're not allowed to suggest a film again for a little bit. You're grounded, bro. This is a good movie. However, but it wasn't a good movie. It, yeah, it was. It was. It was a. We we were about twenty minutes out from the completion, and we're sitting there going, "Is it done? Is this over but yet?" It, but it was only that last twenty minutes where I was really like, "But the rest of the movie is very entertaining." What what movie were we talking about today? We are going to be watching Redneck Zombies from nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. Thank you, Lloyd Kaufman and Troma, the Troma. creators of Toxic Avenger. In which I am uh, newly introduced to Troma, which Tara has introduced me to. Uh, they, I have quite a few of them that you might actually like. They, they spare no expense. As far Gratuitous as the gore, gore, nudity, language, wonderful. the situations make no sense. The, the gore was wonderful. The, the, um, the injuries, the, the flesh. Oh, the was, gore in this, it was, and that's, it's so, so Troma. The gore is over the top. The nudity is over the top. The acting is subpar. And the actors and actresses are not attractive even in the slightest. They None. look like your everyday person. Yes, and so the movie begins with the 47-second long intro of the camera just into the road with nothing on it. As a vehicle slowly, slowly approaches. And the plot behind this entire movie. A barrel of toxic waste by the military, lost in the backwoods when it falls off the rear of a Jeep. Uh, this is found by a group of rednecks and is used to create a moonshine still, which makes the moonshine toxic and when drink, turns the drinkers into zombies. zombies. Now, the... Getting to the point where they go to start siphoning it for the moon, said moonshine, mm -hmm. and which I'm gonna call his character Billy Bob because that's the best. It, he just there was an there was there was the one that wanted to be called Ellie May. That was part of the brothers. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, you're was, thinking of the big old fat the, boy. The big old yeah, dude, Mr. big Billy old Bob. fat. Oh, he was a big boy. So the barrel. Travels down off this uh, military jeep, which this guy was supposed to be, you know, taking care of it. And big boy Billy Bob comes over and finds it. And he goes, he's trying to read the barrel, which it says, you know, toxic waste. He goes, do not open till Christmas. And this was probably the funniest intro to the movie. And letting you know how their sound effects are, their music, their acting. It really, it really set everything up. Like at that moment, buckle up. You knew. It doesn't get better. <laughs> he stands up and he goes, he looks to the side, the music twines. Oh my God. He looks to the other side, the music twines. Oh, the score throughout ah. this entire movie. <sighs> it was hilarious. It was so monotonous. And then you have the four, uh, the three brothers and assuming Pa, uh, that find Billy Bob, said Billy Bob, 
And because he has destroyed one of their moonshine uh, stills, stills, that he has to give them this toxic waste, in which then they rig it up and have to deliver their moonshine to their you know angry customers that were, ended up waiting like two days. Oh, and they they follow every backwoods stereotype, you know, mama putting moonshine in the baby's bottle, giving it to the kid. They the old man with the <laughs> one closed eye constantly. They follow. Every horrible, horrible stigma and stereotype that there is out there. And i got to say congratulations on that one. And the brothers, they, they almost act like the Three Stooges. They like, really like are kind of Three Stooges. The pot ends up going to slap them and slaps all three of them at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Like just funny shit like that. Uh, even even in the way they presented themselves. Very comical. It was, it was definitely interesting. So not only do you have this story going on with the siphoning and making oh, of the good moonshine. Lord, the city slickers. Then you have a side quest going on in the woods where you have these city slickers that are there to God do, knows what to do. They're out there getting in touch with nature. They're out camping. With a guide that... Is a total ding-dong. Yeah. And each camper fits a different... A different genre, genre of and, horror. Yeah, you know, like your typical teenagers out in the woods. Yep, different you know, styles. There was some of Friday the Thirteenth in there. Going on, yeah. A little bit of Freddy Krueger, and then the one that was <sighs> like uber clean, changing his T-shirt constantly, all, all using time. aerosol deodorant. <sighs> and speaking of the deodorant, this is probably the first and the only time we are ever going to see. Aerosol deodorant utilized as a weapon as a against weapon. zombies. Because it dries their skin. Now, only a particular one, though. Kind of like from uh, Evolution with the... Uh, it's got to have the head and shoulders with the, the sulfa la 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 Yeah, with that one. Yeah. Uh, this deodorant has to have a specific chemical in it in order to dry the zombie skin out. Now, that was kind of jumped forward. Jumping back... The reason why they had to come up with this is so all these people start drinking this moonshine and turning into zombies, which then end up chasing said city slickers deeper one by into, one, deeper into the woods and taking them out one by one. So then they end up catching a zombie and killing it, and oh my god, taking it to the cave. Now, yeah, we know they end up they ended up in a cave all together as they were running. We noticed as the movie progressed, there's one particular character, I can't remember his name right off the bat, uh, there's this uh, this black guy that's uh, the kind of comic relief of the movie, even funnier than like... Yeah, even from the beginning, he, he was the funnier he, of the group. And he starts off kind of serious, and then again, as the movie progresses, he, he gets got weirder, weirder and, and, and a little his, more eccentric. And his hair starts changing, and, and we're yeah. like, look at him like, is this an Easter egg? Like, what's going on? Our our uh, question was answered very quickly when in the cave, a, when a tripping sequence, like a very yeah. out of sorts trip sequence. He explains that he had when they first got there, he had taken a hit of acid, and has progressively you that know, would make going camping f- interesting, right? Going <laughs> further into his trip. Well, then the other campers want him to. Could, like dissect, dissect, like do an autopsy on, on this, zombie. this zombie, and what we're seeing is guts Organs, and guts. all sorts of stuff being pulled Which out. Which they did wonderfully on. By Absolutely. The way. Oh my gosh! The all the guts and, and gore the, was the dripping. Oh, guts tissue. and glory. Wonderful. But what we're seeing is guts. But what he's seeing, they do a quick flip to show what his reality looks like. When he's pulling something out, say, he was pulling out the pancreas, it was a boot. He saw a boot, and he's He's just sitting there like, what else has he got in here? He's like, what is this boot doing in here? Flames at his side, and yeah, he starts digging through the body. It was really quite interesting. Finding all this random shit, and then all the other campers are seeing what's really going on, which is a bunch of... And then he tries to crawl inside the body. He's like, hmm. I was actually grossed out by some of that. He's like, hmm, I think I can fit in here. He starts moving around everything. And <laughs> the next thing you know, he's like trying to get inside of this body of a, of a dead zombie. And then it cuts out. But that part Tom right Tom there. Tom smells worse on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> that part right there was 
the funniest part of the movie. Yeah, I, I will definitely agree. That was one of the better portions of it. I, I started to get a little invested. And then all of a sudden, they changed pace. And the investment waned. And this is at the point of the uh, near the end of the movie. And what's going on is that all, they're all zombies. And then, you know, of course, the zombies have to die. But then also people have to die. So you're, you're trickling down, you know, to the final frontier of the survivors, which you don't expect this particular one to be surviving. Oh, Lord. But this, and this is where I'm saying this last 20 minutes, 25 minutes, it, the, oh. mo- the movie could have cut out and you would have been perfectly fine. Well, and the reason I felt that last 20 minutes sucked so bad is because you'd start... At the end of a horror movie, you kind of get an inkling that the close is coming. The conclusion. Yeah. You <laughs> get this you get this little feeling like, all right, here comes the end, and it's not over yet. Okay, here comes the end, and then end, they jump to something and else. it's not over yet. But and it's not even exciting shit. It's just moving on to a different location or a different dialogue. Yeah. It's not even exciting. Just when you think it's over, it's not. So you have the female survivor of... Because the, there's always got to be a final girl. Yep. In which... Billy Bob as a zombie. There is a uh, unwanted advancement type of sequence. Better wording. Which results in a unexpected and unplanned pregnancy. From zombie to human. It was the most ridiculous. All I could think is, you know, they were having body parts falling off and stuff. Why didn't his fall off? I don't know. I mean... That would have been funny. Come on, trauma. That would have been funny. Because, like, if the, like some yeah. of them like reacted to the moonshine differently and like had boils and shit like popping. Yeah, off everybody and, like, seemed to kind of react to it yeah. different. Some of them would die from it. Others became zombies, and so you, it didn't really explain it's any very of that. Peculiar. This was a great movie. Besides the last twenty minutes, it was hilarious to watch. It had. Everything that a B movie it needs. It followed all the rules. There were one note characters, cheap effects, crude cinematography. This was a ten thousand dollar estimated budget, which is crazy. All of it definitely to the went guts. into the blood guts, and it was fantastic. There's there was a part in the movie where the zombie uh, attaches to. Uh, oh, he took a chunk out of took, her neck. Yeah, and it looked wonderful. It sprayed. In the, the right way direction. it should. Yeah, like it was... somebody definitely paid attention to how blood splatter works. It was wonderful. I... The flesh coming off of it, the flesh that was inside the neck, yes. like looking. The if you're looking for gore, trauma movies. That is where you need to go for gore. Their makeup for the zombies was horrible. Absolutely awful. But their gore to be gore was spot on. It was the epitome of what you look for in a B movie. But it was torture. It was a three out of five for me. I will go three as well, simply because there were, there's a nostalgia of watching movies from that brand. Oh, absolutely. There is. For me, there's a nostalgia, because I grew up on the Toxic Avenger and Tromeo and Juliet and all that stuff. And which it being, you know, from 1987, I mean, you're talking 30, 33, 34, how old? Well, let's see. I I was six years old at that time, and I'm 40 now. Well, I can't remember how old I was. What am I, 34? Yeah, you're 34. Yeah, born the same year. That's what I was trying to figure out. But yeah, being a 34-year-old movie, it held its value as a as sense that it was a great B-movie. The, the makeup, oh, like, it's certainly not it's something. It's certainly not something that would get the go-ahead these days. No. It, it has you know, you got have shameless old... humor. Yeah. Um, very un-PC jokes about race, religion, religion. and even pot smoking. Yeah. It... This was an extreme extremely in-your-face, yeah, very on pc film. And that's one thing that we left out. You had the tobacco guy. The tobacco guy was weird. Was, which had a bag over his head, and and, and this pretty much was you like... You ever saw the movie The Town That Feared Sundown? It, that's, that's... It made no sense, but he was like selling them tobacco that made them also weird, and then you had the moon... It was, yeah, the whole... It, the tobacco no scene... Sense had no place anywhere in the movie. None. I, I mean, Tobacco Guy does come back again a little bit later. And you can't understand anything that he's saying because... He's the one who rescues the final girl. Yeah, but everything... You can barely understand Everything him. he says has like a, a like a quad echo effect. Yeah, it was it was really difficult to, to understand him. This movie we found on Amazon Prime. Yes. 
Okay, Amazon Prime. We did not end up buying it. We rented, so I believe it was $3. like $3.99. Okay, so four dollars. I think. Okay, I so think. four U.S. dollars. Yep. If if you feel Three like out checking five. it out, yeah, go. I mean, I would never tell anybody don't watch this film. Right, because it's However, a good movie. However, some slight inebriation may be necessary. Quite possibly. Yeah. Some inebriation might be necessary for this one. And, Alan, you are definitely grounded, mister. Thank you so much, Alan. We appreciate it. But, yes, Bad you're, you're, boy. Yeah, you, yeah. Well done. Thank you very much for the suggestion. And, yes, if any of you out there have any further suggestions of movies Let's that know. you think are just total garbage or absolutely fantastic, we'll take the fantastic, please. I don't know. I like, I like watching the garbage ones just for these reasons alone that it's like, what what were directors or actors like feeling when they were making these oh movies? Oh, my. Please tell us in the comments movies you'd like to see. If you've seen this one, give your take on it, too. We really, really do like seeing some commentary on there. Absolutely. And do not forget, uh, you can follow us on Facebook at Gore to be Gore. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Yes, thank you very much. And every single one of you have very, 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 very pleasant nightmares. <laughs>